E-Ink technology has really advanced itself in the past 10 years. When you think of E-Ink, it was just an e-reader. The Amazon Kindle, you get it, you read books. You can have thousands of books in one device. Uh, it's easy on your eyes, and that was the end of it. And now we're seeing note-taking devices, digital signage with multi-colors, extended monitors that cost $1,300, $1,500 at times for dual-screen music devices. E-Ink is no longer just about reading, and it has advanced itself into pretty much every facet of electronics, from watches to bus schedules in Japan. So we're going to look at three categories of e-ink devices, three main categories. It'll be e-readers, note-taking, and other. That seems to be what is occupying the market right now in e-readers, so let's check it out. <laughs> The e-reader is something like the Kobo Forma, the uh, Amazon Oasis, the Kindle Paperwhite, the Barnes & Noble Nook, etc. It's something that is just used for reading books. You put thousands of books on there, they may or may not have removable storage, they may or may not have audio support because a lot of e-readers are just bare bones devices that are used for reading books and reading books only. Some of them, if not all of them nowadays, have stretched into running PDFs, uh, technical documents, and to a lesser extent, manga. Only certain ones touch on manga. Uh, some of them even try to rebrand themselves and re release themselves as double the storage or triple the storage or whatever the case may be. But for the most part, e-readers are strictly meant for reading books. There isn't anything else to them. A lot of them don't have headphone jacks. Uh, the earlier models, everything had everything. They had headphone jacks on them. They had SD cards. They had dual speakers. They were really packed with features, but now they kind of went back to more of a simplistic body with very few buttons, very few features, and keeping everything kind of wireless now. So. Uh, if you want audio, you'll have to use a series of dongles that go from the USB port or connect with Wi-Fi or Bluetooth respectively depending on the device. E-readers used to be kind of really expensive when they came out and then they were extremely cheap as low as $39, $49 or even $29 like the Texture Beagle, although we're not going to count that because that was one of the worst e-readers ever made. Uh, now they're upwards of $400 like the Kindle Oasis 3 Gold Max Gigabyte uh, storage model. So they can actually range themselves from economy to premium devices when it just comes to a reading device. So that is basically what the e-reading device is. It usually doesn't have any sort of note-taking capabilities with anything outside of your finger. Some devices like Kobo and Pocketbook, they have the Sketch app that just uses your finger, but that's really just kind of a cheat way. Uh, but what we're going to get into next is something that the market is basically flooded with as of 2018, and that is digital note-taking devices. Digital note-taking devices isn't something you just use your capacitive stylus or your fingertip with to interact with. That would just be for the menu UI and the overall navigation of the device itself. The primary focus of a digital note-taking device is that it has a Wacom layer. This is going to allow you to use a Wacom pencil or a stylus, interact with the device, and draw like normally. This includes tons of different devices. The Remarkable, the Sony, the Onyx, the Boyu, the Supernote. There's so many devices that are in this space now, even devices that are trying to make their way in, like the um, uh, whiskey EE note out of uh, China and there's a bunch more that are trying to have this Wacom battle that everyone's trying to one-up each other and dub you know we have octa-core we have deca-core processors and devices now we have 64 gigabytes onboard storage with SD cards uh, some have sim cards on there that allow you to use uh, you know data communications to make phone calls now so it's gone past the point of it being an e-reader more of it being a tablet 
with an e-ink screen. So you can think of it as all the same internals of a tablet, like the Onyx Books Max 3, which is effectively as much of a tablet as I've ever seen, but the only way to view the content is via the e-ink screen. As what just came out recently, the Nova 2. This thing is a very compact, high performance device that just so happens to have an e-ink screen on it. A lot of these have glow lights now and they offer uh, many different things like having Android on the device to the point where you can sideload anything you want, put on Facebook, put on Instagram, put on OneNote, Google Drive, and use this as a fully fledged multimedia device. And they do everything nowadays. Uh, they even double as secondary monitors, which we'll get into in a... Um, the third segment, which is going to be other. But digital note-taking devices are just everywhere now and they totally range from downwards of $200 upwards to as much as $1400 depend on depending on what you want what brand you're buying what level you're buying what level of uh, capabilities it has, storage, whether it has uh, Wi-Fi, uh, you know, 3G communication from Sun distributors. So it's a, it's a really wide range of devices, but these ones are going to be catered to people that like to take notes, draw schematics, music production, educational institutions, and law firms actually have uh, fairly taken to these as well. And basically all of this kicked off with the Sony DPT-S1 pretty much. And this was the thing that started it all, started the trend of everything coming out. There were a couple players early on in the game, but Sony did it right and they're actually still going with the Sony line of DPT devices. There's too many categories to actually put into say five or 10 segments of this video, but the third segment is basically an all-encompassing segment of just other. For example, they have the SES Imago Tag line, and these are panels that just display advertisement or prices. You'll notice that a lot of supermarket chains, uh, chains, uh, cell phone stores, electronic stores, or just retail shopping environments, you will see these tags display things. And this is a real e-ink display. This is not a piece of paper on here. This is really a, a, a KitKat uh, advertisement and I'm not advertising for KitKat, it's just the way it arrives and we can't change it because we don't have access to the actual um, uh, wireless communication system to go beep and change the actual imagery. But the, these are basically everywhere now and you'll see them in multiple countries across multiple continents. Uh, something else you'll notice is this thing right here which is a secondary monitor which I mentioned the Onyx books can do but this one is primarily and only used for secondary monitor purposes. You plug in things to this, your cell phone, your computer, uh, etc. and your laptop and it will extend your monitor and it will use e-ink. And you can see there's very little glare. It's like looking at a piece of paper, so it won't harm your eyes or anything. And these are very expensive. They're anywhere from $1,000 to $1,600, depending on where and what you purchase. There's also other things like this right here, which is the uh, digital manga reader by Progress Technologies. And this doesn't have a UI. You can't download anything to it. You literally buy these uh, proprietary SD cards, plug them in and start reading reading manga. So this separates itself from an e-reader in the sense where you have no control over what you download and put in. You can only buy the actual already prepared volumes through this company and this company only to read them on there. They also have things like e-ink watches, e-ink bus bench ads, uh, gigantic displays that are, you know, 30 something inches at trade shows that, that, that have e-ink on them. Um, e-ink phones, e-ink um, uh, back panel cases for your smartphone and tablets. They have a lot of things that are e-ink and if you're still unsure about what e-ink is and why it's so prevalent and why it's everywhere, keep checking out our channel because that's basically all we do. So the third category is just all uh, other because it's just all encompassing. There's everything else that's e-ink basically falls under the third category. And these will be things that aren't exactly too mainstream. Like when I said e-ink phones, there's only a couple for sale. E-ink watches are few and far between. The, those are basically the three categories of e-ink devices would be e-readers, digital note-taking devices, which has grown to be its own category as of 2020, uh, and other, which would just be 
everything else piled in there. So if you guys have any other questions, comments, or concerns, or want us to explain a little bit more about what e-ink is and the other things that e-ink just exists upon, uh, like the Guido, which is a double screen, uh, dual screen 13.3 inch music device. I mean, that's just, that's about as maxed out uh, Bugatti you can get in the e-ink world. That thing's, I think, $1,400 USD. So uh, we can touch on anything you want us to touch on in the future. And for everything e-ink, keep tuning into goodyreader.com. And for a quick informative video on e-ink devices, this is Peter.